I think it's, it's very, very important, not only for patients, but for physicians to recognize uh, the overall management of IBD as a chronic uh, disease. So if we really wanted to be in the perfect world that we could take care of our patients and we can perform at our best as physicians, these are the things that we would want to do. We'd want to make the diagnosis quickly uh, and accurately. We'd want to be able to assess the disease severity at the time that you're diagnosed and determine your prognosis. We know that all of uh, all of the uh, patients out there don't have a poor prognosis. So there's this large spectrum of uh, whether or not you have sort of a mild course with your inflammatory bowel disease and those unfortunately who may have a more difficult course. We wanna select the appropriate therapy for the appropriate patient uh, to, to induce in what we call maintain remission. And the latter part is probably the most important is to have a drug that you can stay on long-term that's effective and safe. And we wanna be able to have a discussion with our patients regarding um, what the target is that we're trying to treat. In your day-to-day -day life, the most important thing is how you feel, your symptoms, and how they affect your quality of life. Um, unfortunately, we know that there's this disconnect between those symptoms and whether or not your disease is active. And many of you may have had this discussion with your gastroenterologist where they're saying, well, maybe we should change medication because you still have some inflammation. That's a very, very important educational uh, sort of uh, component of what we do and make sure that patients understand that disconnect between feeling well and controlling the disease. Ultimately, because we know that these diseases are associated uh, with hospitalization and surgeries, we would like to modify the long-term outcomes of the disease. We'd like to reduce your hospitalization, reduce disability, and reduce the proportion of patients who go, uh, who go to surgery. We wanna make sure that we have the ability to monitor for relapse. And in 2021, that uh, means trying to uh, employ uh, techniques uh, and strategies where we can tell whether or not you are going to have a flare of your disease before you actually have what we call a symptomatic flare. And obviously during this uh, time period, we wanna be able to monitor for drug and drug related uh, complications. Unfortunately, due to systemic reasons, um, access and some, access not only to providers, but to medications, and we'll get into this, uh, we don't achieve all of the, the outcomes that we want. And the reasons are we're too late in our diagnosis or treatment initiation. And this is where the role of Crohn's Colitis Canada as an advocacy group, advocacy group comes up and you as individual patients to ensure that you know, the general public understand what these diseases are so that they seek medical attention sooner rather than later. Um, we also employ therapies that don't work. There are historical therapies like mesalamine or 5-ASAs, steroids or azathioprine, and in particular uh, steroids where patients are exposed repeatedly to steroids. So there's no long-term plan. And as I said before, the most important thing is probably to uh, have uh, drugs that work long term. Therapies are not always optimized, uh, and we know that for individual patients, individual patients may need different doses of drugs or different timing of drugs to make sure that they have an optimal response. And this really speaks to the difference between perhaps what Dr. Moyetti is going to show you within what we call the clinical trials, where we assess efficacy of drugs and the effectiveness of these drugs in real world practice, because we can play around with the drugs in a way that we can't in uh, the clinical trials to increase the benefit that they may have for, uh, for the individual patient. And again, we talked about this disconnect between the way a patient feels and uh, the way uh, and whether there's active inflammation. Much of this, as you can tell, has to do with education. I think that we need and we need to do a better job in educating our patients on what the standards are and the goals of care are in 2021. And I do believe that CCC has done an excellent job in moving this.